Face swapping. It's all the rage. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. A lot of people do it. It's a common meme. And there's actually four ways you can do it in DaVinci Resolve. So let's jump right in and swap some faces. First one can just be done right on the edit page. I went ahead and chose this clip of Happy getting punched. The reason for that is there's a good amount of motion blur in here. And that tends to mess with trackers. I just want to show you what happens when we try to apply stuff and kind of some ways to correct that. First things first, we can just do one on the edit page here. And this is probably the simplest and honestly might be one of the easiest. So we can just drag and drop our image right on there. Go ahead and resize it. Move it kind of over his face, right like that. And the easiest way is just to keyframe something and do it manually. So if you go ahead and just keyframe your position, scroll through your footage until you have, you know, a substantial move, go ahead and move it into position. Go a little bit further, move it down into position, a little further, move it down, maybe to the end there. And uh, it works pretty well, pretty easy. Now, that doesn't help with a really long clip. You don't want to have to keyframe every little thing, but this is a super fast, super straightforward way. If you just got a little clip. Also, another little tip is just to break up your clip where there already is an edit. If I extend this out, you can see it changes scenes. So I already went ahead and broke that up. You wouldn't be able to track across different clip cuts like that. So trim it to a single scene. You'll just have to do that for every individual clip. The second way, or the next two ways are all right on the Fusion page. We'll go ahead and go to Fusion. Now the two ways to do this, there is a planar tracker, hit control space. There's also just tracker, and this is kind of like a point tracker. So I'm gonna show you the planar tracker first. Let's move that down onto our footage. Holding shift, and I drag it over the top. You can see that line going through. If I just drop it there, it's attached. That's what we want. Let's move, make sure we're back on our first frame, and we're going to just draw a box. I'm gonna do around the face, make sure you close that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on set. Otherwise, this is going to try and do from frame zero. Actually, let me let me undo that. Let me show you what it says. If we try and track, I'll just come up with an error. It says you're trying to track from frame zero. We're not actually on frame zero. So go ahead and hit set. And then you can go ahead and track to the end. Now, it already lost our track there. That's no good. If you ever need a track from another point, you can always just go to that point hit track again, but since it's already lost it, let me show you a few ways you can fix some of this. So a couple things we wanna change. Make sure we go to hybrid point area. That'll help a lot. Perspective, we kinda of wanna just change, change that to translation. Perspective tends to warp stuff. It looks real funky. Actually, let's just do that. Let's go to perspective. I'll show you what that looks like. Let's see if this will track now. It tends to not give a very good track. One way you can help with this is changing from Luma to a color channel. If you go up here, this is just on color right now, but you have a red channel, green channel, blue channel, and what we're really looking for is contrast in these. And green generally gives the best. That's why we use green screens. So we'll just try it with green. I can change this back, make sure this is set to green. Let's add in his shirt. That's got nice contrast there. Let's see if that helps. Having some issues with that. Let's see if we can do, let's just see if translation works. That works a lot better. Can't seem to get it working. I got it working earlier. Perspective, what it'll do is it'll just try and change, make it 3D, and it'll just warp your image over top. It's not really something you want all that much. You can go to create a planar transform, and that has all your tracking information. And you can add in this image to the tracking information, but I found that doesn't work all that well, actually. A much better way is to, let's first add transform to this, because I want to be able to move my image around. It's just easier to plug it right in. I have not had good luck with just duplicating the data. For some reason, it doesn't go across very well. Now you might notice that this image actually isn't showing up. What you wanna do is you'll go to Planar Tracker, back to our first frame. We'll change this track to Corner Pin. Now this Planar Tracker is usually used for flat surfaces, and as you might imagine, tracking on a plane, basically something flat. Um, it's not really meant for this, but you can use it. It works fairly decently with all the tracking points. Now if we play it, it tracks pretty well. That's one way you can do it. The other way is to use this other kind of point tracker. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this on. And it makes this little uh, tracker, and this is the most annoying part, you can only move it by clicking this upper left hand corner. Try and move anything there, it, just, it doesn't work. Put this over something that's pretty noticeable. Let's try there, and then this other outer box is for kind of the area that you want it to search for this track in. 
Um, try and keep this pretty small. The larger it is, the longer it'll take to compute. This is a better tracker than the planar tracker, but it'd be pretty heavy on your computer. So let's go ahead and track that. Actually, let's change the channel. Let's use that color trick again, because this will give a better track. It takes a lot longer. It's going to try and hunt down that image uh, in that region. So just give it a minute. Nice thing about this tracker over the planar tracker is you can move some of those points. So it ends up being a little bit like the manual. Uh, you can move the points to where they need to be. I haven't found a way to do that with a planar tracker. Okay, it took uh, just over two minutes to do that. Um, and you can see it uh, lost track of where it was supposed to be. You can fix this in different spots. You can just go to the keyframe, move it to where it's supposed to be. This ends up being a lot like the manual mode, which is why the manual mode is a lot faster a lot of times. I'm not sure why this doesn't work, just plugging it straight in, but it doesn't seem to work. So what you can do is you can just merge it in, you can move it to where you need it to, resize it, and then you can right click on this, go to connect to tracker path position. And what that's going to do is that's going to follow the same path as the tracker did. And it's not very good in this case. Sometimes one works better than the other. Let's get rid of all that. The last way you can do this is just right on the color page. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to track your footage. Let's put a window in. Let's throw on this kind of a lips mask. And it does a pretty good job of tracking. Go ahead and go to the tracking tab and just track forward. You can see it did a really good job tracking. Fortunately, I haven't figured out a good way to stick an image to it, but we'll go through that. So go back to the edit page, move this down, kind of resize it, move it to where you want it, and then convert this to a compound clip. It just, it helps the track a little bit. I'm not sure why. It just helps just a tiny bit. It's not too bad if you just leave it as a PNG, but this helps a little bit more. Go back to the color, we want to click on our first track, go ahead and go on these three dots, go to, go to copy track data, go to our second clip, we're going to move this second dot, the stabilizer, we're going to want to go to, down to classic stabilize, go ahead and uncheck that zoom, it doesn't do too much, but again, it's one of those things that uh, moves the tracker around, it's one of those things that just helps with tracking, and make this strong, negative 100. If you don't do that, the clip tends to spaz out a little bit and resize itself. I'm not really sure why. Now you can paste in your track data and click on stabilize. And it doesn't look like it did anything, but it immediately put our track right on there. It's cut off because I didn't have it resized correctly in the edit page. And there you go. Now you're a face swapping master. That's it for the Monday meme, guys. I'll have another video out this week. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. You want a piece of me? I don't want a piece of you. I want the whole thing! Oh!